Okay, so here we go. So today uh, we have a first class. So we, in this class, we're going to learn Kitzur uh, Sholchanorach, uh, basically the laws of uh, conduct, uh, how the Jew is supposed to live his life. And uh, in, a, in the beginning of each class, so we, we do a quick um, <clears throat> lesson a day of Hofitz Chaim. So we're starting from introduction. So, but since introduction, uh, like uh, many, many pages, we're going to finish in, I don't know when. So we're going to, uh, but uh, this introduction is broken on many, like, um, ideas. So okay. we're going to go by ideas. Okay. So, okay. So uh, you can interrupt me any anytime you have a questions, if okay. you want to comment. So we're going to go by, uh, like, uh, small paragraphs. So you have a text. Everybody have a text in front of them. So, and um, we do small paragraph and we discuss. You want to add something to it. So it basically, the way I, I want to have these classes is, uh, is interaction. Okay. So it's not like I'm I'm reading and you're listening. So I need interaction. I need the feedback. Okay. Right, like interaction. I got yes. It. Yes. Okay. So all right. Uh, okay. So we start this. Uh, okay. Overview of beauty of shmiras halashon. So shmiras halashon. Shmira. It means uh, it's w watching your tongue. Right? Watching your tongue uh, from uh, speaking uh, uh, what is not appropriate. Okay. Right. So, so start. This is not a book about your tongue. This is a book uh, about the essence, uh, the person, uh, the person Hashem created you to be. So it's not about your tongue. It's what Hashem you created you to be. You will see what it means. The Torah's laws of speech, whose absorption is um, capsulized by the timeless uh, term Shmilas Harasho, constitute God's plan. For how people should live with each other. So basically the idea is when Hashem created the world, so created he created many people. And now people have to communicate with each other. But there are clear laws, many halachas laws, how we, we should conduct a business with each other, how we should talk to each other. Right? Not to talk uh, uh, like same same uh, uh, concept when, when we have forbidden food. Right, so some food we don't eat, so some uh, some things we do not say. Also, very clear guidelines. Uh, they are they are tools that the Torah has given us to remove anger, bitterness, and jealousy from our hearts. Okay, that's uh, referred to Rabbi so Rubin's. It, uh, yeah, go ahead. So it's saying so it's saying that based on how we speak. These yes. things are like anger, bitterness, jealousy, like envy, all this stuff. Based on how we talk, it ref like all this stuff comes up inside of us. Yes, yes, it's a, it's part of it. So and uh, yeah, because so, I want to get rid of all this. I mean, I, I'm working on it. So for me, this is very yeah, 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 yeah. It's a uh, you. Uh, it's it's everybody. Everybody, everybody supports it. Right. Yes, and to eliminate strife, it's. Uh, very important how, how all strife uh, starts from uh, one stupid comment mm -hmm. when somebody could not hold him back and he said something what he was not supposed to say he or she and that uh, strife started and continues for ma even many generations to eliminate strife hurt uh, divisiveness from the Jewish people okay so basically one like uh, one one thing that we we do not talk bad about Jews in general. It's the the worst thing that uh, a person can do, because all of the Jews are uh, Hashem's children, and no father would like uh, anybody, doesn't matter how holy that person is, to talk bad about his children. Okay. When we examine the workings of our world, we come to see that they are more than any more than any other human capacity define us basically like um, what does sentence mean that, uh, that what defines human as a human it's our speech so for example all animals are also eat and they also reproduce right and they sleep and uh, have other activities right and they go to the bathroom right but uh, what uh, uh, separates humans from animals is our speech. 
uh, what we say and how we say it is how we are, is who we are. One more time, what we say and how we say it. So you, you can say uh, one sentence with a different uh, like emotions, right? Right. So and it defines who we are. Angry, hurtful words define an angry and hurtful person. Kind, considerate, considerate words define a kind, considerate person. I mean, it's uh, straightforward, right? So if you wanna be kind and considerate, that's a big praise. So start with your speech. This uh, this can be seen by uh, considering the unique nature of the tongue. It is partly hidden and partly revealed. So it's very interesting. So other all other organs, so you can see completely, right, of the body, or, or you don't see them at all. Right. For example, heart, you don't you don't see the heart, right? But uh, hand, you you see the, the whole hand. But uh, tongue, partly hidden, partly revealed. Very interesting. So it's unique in this. Oh, sense. that is interesting. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it is um, it is usually not seen, but it is heard. Interesting. Maharal concludes that Hashem designed um, designed the tan to reflect to reflect its function, which is to reveal the hidden self, one's thoughts. So the the thoughts of the man are hidden inside, but they are revealed through his tongue when he starts speaking. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. I never thought about it this way. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very like, yes. interesting about the tongue. Yes, yes, yes. So one more time, one second. So um, one second. Um, which is to reveal the hidden self, one time. Uh, ideas and personality. So when the person is speaking, so you can uh, see what uh, what he really is. For example, when two people meet, so by if they start uh, discussing, I don't know, sports or politics, so you you see the the, the sport, uh, the, the, this person is uh, is uh, that that's uh, that's what he's interested in. That's what defines a person, his interests, right? And how he reveals it through the tongue. The tongue takes uh, these hidden elements from within the person, and through the words, brings them into the open. So whatever is hidden in, in a person, whatever or his anger, or he he not, now this guy met met you after the seven years and now he he's telling you how he's angry because uh, on that birthday you I don't know, you push him you step on his toe or whatever. So you so and it it all reveals through the tongue. So we're going to stop here. We're done with the first idea. And we're going to go to Kitzar Shulchan Okay. All right. So one more time. If you have any questions, any comments, please stop me. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So we start with the very beginning. And uh, <clears throat> Simon 1. So Simon, Simon means a chapter. Right? A chapter. And, um, and the, 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 the subject of this uh, Simon, the law of early morning. So the Jews' life starts in early morning, right? Even though the day starts in the evening, right? So in uh, according to uh, in some halachas that we're going to learn, the day is going to start in the evening, but in some in some sense the the day starts in the morning. So now we, we start with the morning when uh, the person wakes up, and right. it says contains seven sifim. So sif is like a sub paragraph. Okay. So, okay, introduction. <clears throat> in introducing the various religious ob uh, obligation of the Jew included in this sefer, okay, Kitzer outlined the fundamentals of avodas Hashem, sources of Hashem, that relate to the proper conduct upon awakening in the morning. So, one thing that uh, I have to say. So, uh, Kitzer, I mean, uh, uh, short. Yeah. That's. The short version. So these uh, simans they don't do not correspond to to the big shulchan Right. Just so 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 we don't have any any confusion. Okay. Okay. So um, 
see if number one. I have said uh, Hashem before me constantly as a fundamental concept is the, is the fundamental concept of the Torah and that the spiritual level of the righteousness of, of the righteous who walk before God. Okay. So let's uh, read the commentary and then we explain. So first, uh, I have said Hashem before me constantly. Commentary number one. There is the concept of... Um, uh, the the comes a concept of consistent awareness of the divine presence which is expressed by by this verse will guide the man so that all his actions are con consistent with oblig uh, with obligation as a Jew so what it means I tell you that many many years ago many many years ago I remember it was uh, somebody's birthday and they asked me to 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 videotape right uh, so it was a camcorder with, uh, with all of this uh, I don't know many many years ago okay so and uh, it was somebody's birthday or whatever and I was videotaping people and as soon as camera was on them the people changed their behavior everything changes yeah. everything changes why because who I mean uh, who am I right I was uh, I don't know and and who who is going to see this uh, recording? Maybe, maybe the, this uh, birthday guy, maybe nobody ever, maybe I'm going to lose this this uh, tape, I don't know. But people change, yeah, like the tone of the voice, they have movement, and now he's uh, he's very nice uh, to, to his wife suddenly because he knows that the camera is uh, in, uh, is pointing to, to his yeah. directions. So basically that's... Uh, concept that we all have to take into our mind that hashem watches us constantly yes that's the scary part for me like almost all the time <laughs> is that like i'm being watched every second right so uh -huh. how, 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 can, how do i look at it right like not only is he watching me but he's watching what i'm watching yes so everywhere i walk so it's like i know that my eyes are basically like a camera for shemaim like yes when, when i reach 120 yeah. Like everything I've seen is being recorded through my eyes, right? Yes. The hardest part for me is I I know when I'm by myself, like I, I always feel like I always am aware that Hashem is with me. Mm -hmm. The part when I lose him is sometimes when I interact with people, you know, and like at work, for instance, and I'm talking and I'm just, I forget that he's there in that mm -hmm. one moment, you know? Mm -hmm. So like what you know, and then I think after the conversation ended, like oh my, like what did I say? Mm -hmm. what did, did I do anything wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, in the morning, it takes me a while, like a few seconds, to like actually understand that okay, hold on, Hashem is watching me right now. I have to get up. I can't keep laying down. You know. Yes. So, uh, but sometimes I have those moments of where it's easy to forget that He's there. You mm -hmm. know, like it's just I don't know, like because you go about your day and you just. You know that's that's what scares me is that I forget that he's there in those little moments. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's what frightens me is that I forget that he's there. You know, and I don't want to forget that he's there because it keeps me straight. Exactly, exactly. That's uh, but the good part about uh, so so being being scared as uh, Rabbi Ruben many times said, uh, Rabbi Mizrahi uh, said uh, uh, that's a good part. That's a good mm -hmm. when when you're scared, it's good. It's good to be scared. And uh, but the bad, uh, but, but the another good part about Hashem watching, so you you know that nothing is going to happen to you. That and He's that's there, that's the He's watching. Part. That's yeah. it. Yes. So it's like uh, so the, the the way I always imagine it's like uh, a baby they start walking, right? Mm -hmm. And the father or mother is behind. Yeah. So this little guy, I don't know, one uh, one and a half years old, or one one year old, he's trying to walk, and and he thinks that he he actually walks, but he does not know that uh, there, there there are hands right behind him, like few yeah. inches from his hand. So if yeah. he would uh, fall, he would fall into his father's arm. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, best part about being watched. So right. it's not like we we neglected and uh, and Hashem left us now. Especially the Jewish people who, who whom uh, he 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 called uh, his portion. 
So his portion, meaning that he's responsible for us, especially right. for us. And that's what's comforting. It's like now Absolutely. I'm doing what he Absolutely. wants, and like now I feel like extra protected. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's it's like it's like uh, like uh, like mm -hmm. se separation, like uh, a father. So if uh, his kid, like a father, with uh, with his son outside, and uh, the the fun uh, the the, the the son is on a bike and he acts a little uh, crazy. So the father would uh, well, would watch him and would uh, um, maybe rebuke him. But if uh, the the neighbor's son uh, doing the same, the father does not care. So the the reason he rebukes his son and maybe even uh, yell at him and maybe even uh, slap him a little right on the butt because because he cares. So same with Jews. So when when we get some things and everybody goes through different things, so it's a good, it's a good thing, it's a good. Oh right. yeah. Right. So let's continue. So second commentary was, the great uh, the greater is awareness, is within the Jew. The greater the level of the righteousness will he attain. So basically, the it's it's a great commentary. So it says the more you are aware that Hashem is watching, so the the better you're going to behave, right? As uh, this, uh, my example is a camera. The best. I never forget this uh, thing. Okay. For the manner in which a person sits, uh, his movements and his activities are not the same when he is alone at home. As he, um, as his manner of sitting, his movements and his activities when he is in the presence of the great king. Right. So, yeah, so every it, action he does, basically, even when he's alone and he's aware that the king is watching, yes, everything is everything is different. Yes, like every the way he sits, the way he eats, the way he even lays down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's so so right even even so the 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 best example they they give even if you were to turn off all all, all of the lights, even if you uh. Shut over all of the windows, and you, you like it's completely dark. So it's like a person might 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 say, "No, nobody see, no, no, nobody see me." But a Jew has to remember, Hashem sees you even there. He does not need any light to see you, and all of these locks and all of the door doors uh, nothing to him. Similarly, similarly, uh, his speech and expression are not. When uh, in a company of his household and uh, and the family members, comparable to speech when he is uh, in the presence of the king. So now when, when the boss comes, so people behave differently, right? When uh, and now and when the kings, when the president of your company comes and he comes from uh, this uh, I don't know, central office and stuff like that and. Uh, he comes only once in seven years, five years, so everybody is prepared. They even painted the walls and stuff like that. And people would talk differently, absolutely differently, right? So that's what we we have to always uh, uh, try try to remember that we in a in the presence of the king, because then, when in the presence of the king, he certainly examines all his movements and speech, so they should be properly refined. Right, so you, nobody wants to 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 look stupid or sound stupid in front of the king, right? In front of the wife and kids, uh, it's maybe different, okay? But uh, but we, we need to know, even uh, it's only a kid, and maybe he does not understand, and this and that. You have to know that uh, kings king is also present here. Certainly, when a person will take uh, to, uh, uh, will take to heart that the great king, the holy one, blessed is he whose glory fills the world, right, is standing over him and absorbing his actions, as stated in Yermiyahu Yermia 23, verse 24, if a person was to hide in, uh, in concealment, would a Nazi, says Hashem, I mean, where, there, <laughs> there is no place to hide, right? Indeed, I, I, I fill the entire heaven and the earth. So Hashem is talking. Certainly, upon realizing this, one would immediately be overtaken by fear, as you said, and submissiveness to the awe of Hashem. Blessed be His name. Blessed is His name. And He will be humbled and bashful before Him. 
So bashfulness is uh, is one of the attributes of the Jew. So a person should be should be bashful, like shameful, right? So like so Adam and, like Adam and Eve were when they realized they were naked. <laughs> like, you know. Yes, yes. So that's um, when when person is bashful when when he's uh, shameful. It's uh, it's a sign of um, wisdom. I'm I'm just commenting on on uh, on what you said. So when they ate from the tree of knowledge, so then only then they realized that they're naked. Uh, right. You understand? So, so like before that, they, they they were fine. Like like uh, you you have a squirrel walking on the street. Uh, the, the squirrel is, is uh, there is no problem with the squirrel, right? I mean uh, it's it's naked. There's no problem, right? Right. It doesn't understand. It. Yes. <laughs> so so only the knowledge. So so the, so the more p person is refined, the more is his knowledge, he uh, the more he's aware of uh, of uh, presence of Hashem. He would dress differently. Dress differently. Right. So let's see the commentary number five. Uh, he will uh, he will not be so brazen as to violate his uh, responsibilities as a Jew. So. Basically, what what it says when when nobody sees him or he thinks that nobody sees him, he maybe go to places that he's not supposed to go. But when uh, he's around other Jews, for example, he would not do that. And it's, and so, but if he if he knows that Hashem is uh, is always there and His presence heals the world, he would uh, for sure uh, um, behave differently. By constant reflection of the omnipresence of Hashem, uh, a person will maintain uh, fidelity to, to a Jewish lifestyle. That constantly somebody is watching, like the camera is on you. Even right. even even you you go to a place and there is a security camera, so you have no idea is it on, is it not on, right? So so I I remember I. One one time I get catalog and uh, I was uh, I don't know looking through the catalog whatever many years ago and it says uh, dummy camera nine dollars so it it looks like exactly <laughs> the good camera right so it, it was the wired but uh, that's it it's not working but for the thieves it's uh, I mean they they would stop they see the camera they do not not know is it working not working you understand. Right, so, right, right. so of course, if this camera, if this stupid camera can stop a person, sure, for sure, this uh, knowledge of uh, existence of Hashem should stop us from doing something 100%. wrong. Yeah. Okay. This entire paragraph is quoted from Rama one one, Simishna Brura one four, and Bior uh, Halacha for practical application of this pre uh, pre uh, precept. So Rama who. Who is Rama? So, uh, five, approximately 500 years ago, Yosef uh, Kara, Rav Yosef Kara, in Tzvaz, uh, so he wrote uh, Sholchan Oroch. So he compiled uh, Sholchan Oroch, okay. And he asked, so so he, he was a Sephardi, so he asked a great rabbi, uh, I think he was uh, his name was uh, Moshe Iserlish, right? Uh, and uh, uh, they, they call him Rama. Right, so I think that if if I'm not mistaken, he's from Poland or Czechoslovakia. I mean, from uh, he, he 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 lived there, right? And so he he wrote commentary according to Ashkenazic tradition. So uh, sometimes it's different, but sometimes it's not different. But mostly it's not different. Just some some. Uh, some little de details. So that's that's right. the Rama. And Mishnah Brura, who is Mishnah Brura? It's Hafiz Chaim that uh, yeah. uh, that, that uh, the first book. So Hafiz Chaim, uh, he passed away in um, I, I think in 1932. All right. So so he, he lived a long life. Okay. So he and so he comes. So he he gives explanations on a Shulchan Aruch and uh, and uh, and Rama. Because uh, they 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 were like concise, and he, he gives like a broader explanation, this example stuff like that. All right, so we do one more halacha, or we stop here. You tell me. Okay. Stop.
No, no, we can. Do okay, that. all right. So let's do one more halacha and then we start. Okay. 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 Today we're going to do shorter class. Okay. Uh, so sif number two. Also, while still lying in bed, one should realize before whom he lies. So he, he, he just woke up, and he no, he should realize before whom he lies. And immediately, uh, and immediately upon awakening. Okay. Sorry, love, really quick. So this each each uh, subsection, right? So it's simon one, and then like so the first one, the first one we went through, right? Yes. So S one. That's yeah. one law that we. That's basically a halacha that. We, yes. That's a law that we yes. have to. We we always have to be aware that he's yes. there. Yes. Yes. It, the it's second not... one is that we're doing now is like even when we're laying in bed, we should yes. just know that he's there. Yes. Okay. So that's a law. That's yes. like a commandment. Yes. We yes. Know it. Okay. Right. So Good. so so this uh, this book so uh, un, unless it says and un, 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 unless the the author is going to say. Um. Well, what he's going to say, it's a good thing to do, or it is a praiseworthy thing to do. So uh, in that case, so he he gives he tells you clearly. So you you're not obligated, but if you want to be, uh, or or he 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 would he would say yirei shemaim, right? You yirei shemaim person or or no no, bal nefesh bal nefesh the expression bal nefesh bal it's uh, owner and nefesh is uh, like soul. So uh, the person, so basically, like the person who cares about his soul, a little extra than uh, all other people, should should act like that. But right. all others, if they don't do that, it's uh, there is no avira, there is no sin. Right. It's okay. just you're doing like a little extra for Hashem Exa exactly. you're scared and you just want to. Yes. Eat. Yes. Okay. So you you want to be like do do a special have a special connection, mm -hmm. but if he does not say any of this. Um, of this expression, that's a basic obligation upon every Jew. Understood. Okay. okay. So that's a clarification. Okay. So so let's uh, let's do this uh, <clears throat> from the beginning. Of the sentence. Also, while uh, while still la uh, lying in, in his bed, one should realize before whom he lies, and immediately upon awakening from his sleep, he should recall the kindness that Hashem may His name be blessed uh, has done to uh, for him. For he has returned his soul to him, which is deposited with Hashem when it was tired. And he, meaning Hashem, returned uh, it to him, refreshed and uh, serene, so as to enable him to perform the blessed uh, one service with his abilities. So l l let's stop here. Uh, the sentence didn't finish, but we stop here because there are many things. Okay. Let's do from the beginning. So, person wakes up. So he he lies in bed, and he has to realize that uh, what what happened during the night. So, so soul consists of several parts, right, of, of the person. So one of these parts goes uh, upstairs, goes to Hashem, and our sages say that it uh, tells actually on that person what what he was doing, right. Really? Yes. Like up in heaven? Uh, like where it goes up towards? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly, exactly. So to Hashem, to 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 the source of uh, its uh, existence, right? Wow. And it, it, and it comes back. So so it was there. So meaning uh, like uh, I don't know when uh, <laughs> I I would say when uh, when when you are away and and then and then you go to to your parents for for a weekend. Right, so you eat uh, your mother cooking and stuff like that. So you sleep a, a little extra. You don't do anything. They take a, taking care of you. Take take care of you. You psh, you come back like uh, like a new new absolutely right. new person, right? So so he that that's exactly what what is going on with the neshama, right? So with, with this part of the soul. So they say that uh, when person sleeps, it's one sixtieth of the death. So that's why they say it's not recommended to sleep too much, because don't don't get the taste of the death. Right. right? Just uh, stay stay away from this. Okay. So basically, so the person has to realize that Hashem gave him his neshama back. Right. And why? 
why he did he give him the shamar back it's it says clear very 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 clearly it cannot be more clear right to do the uh, one service so hashem gave us uh, uh the neshama back so we can serve him not for any other reasons whatsoever you understand and uh, and and to serve him so, uh, every, every, every time we wake up it's like hashem gave us let's say we're not going to his laws like he gives us another day to come back to him yes like, if we're already there like mm. to like I, I, wow okay so he's basically just giving us another chance every time like, yes okay yes. you're serving me or you have another day to find me right like, yes exactly people who are religious okay exactly okay um and 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 to serve him the entire day that's uh, the reason to uh for for this uh, neshama this soul to be returned for uh for this is the man's whole duty that's it that's the person that the the, the 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 reason why hashem created the uh, the people right to to do his bidding right so let's see commentary number six in kahalas so kahalas is um is a book of the writings so we we, we have uh, um 24 books of the torah it's uh this kahalas was written by shloma hamelach right uh kahalas uh, uh, chapter uh, 12 verse 13 since the sole purpose of man existence is uh, for the service of hashem he should be thankful for having awakened awakened with a new um uh, with a renewed vigor he needs in order to accomplish uh, accomplish this so now hashem hashem created us for for his service right and now he gave us all of the power he gave us strength for a new day to to do what we have to do that's why we, we need to to go to sleep person person cannot go without sleeping right we have to go to sleep continue Men's uh, faculties are renewed after the uh, heights uh, sleep, as stated in scripture, Eicha 3.23. Okay, so now uh, uh, everything, the, the whole body is renewed. Even though we, knew, we know that uh, Hashem recreates a person every second, right? Uh, in some sense, it's uh, the complete uh, recreation of the person uh, uh, for, for the night. It's like uh, he was dead and now he's uh, he's alive again. They renewed in the morning. How great is your faithfulness? Meaning, meaning that each morning a person created a new, exactly as we said, right? So, so person is created a new every morning, and he should thank Hashem, may His name be blessed, for this uh, in his full heart. So Hashem gave him another opportunity. And he did not give up on this uh, person. All right? So I have to thank him that uh, Hashem, despite uh, whatever, I was not uh, the perfect Jew that I was, uh, that uh, you expected me to do yesterday, right? But you still gave me the, the chance. I'm very grateful. And while still in his bed, he should declare, I gratefully thank you. So it's a, it's a first blessing. All right? Uh, it's Modeani. Uh, if if you have a uh, Sidur, I'm going to tell you what page. Or you 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 you, 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 you probably find it. Right? I, I always read it in the morning. Okay, that's yeah, it. That's I... it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I gratefully thank you. Um, or living in uh, or living in eternal King, for you have restored my soul to me with compassion. Abandon is use uh, your faithfulness, although his hands are not uh, yet clean. So, so he, uh, he, he, he thanking Hashem uh, for returning his soul, right? And he thanking Hashem that uh, that he still believes in him. So Rabbi Ruben explained uh, some time ago. I don't, I don't remember which lecture, but he sends uh, sends uh, uh, tells us very beautiful kiddush. So he said when uh, when the, this neshama of the person comes to the shemaim to to the heaven. And he complains, and this uh, neshama complains, I, and says, Hashem, I don't want to go back to the sinner. Look, I, I was trying for so many years, but this guy is so numb, I, I, I cannot do it. I'm suffering, I'm suffering. Why, why should I suffer? 
And Hashem says, please, please, Nishama, go back. I hope this day he's going to change. This day the, something might, might change this guy. And we thank Hashem that he believes in us, that he gives us another chance. That he still believes that maybe we're going to change. Although he, so one more time, this sentence we, we need to explain. Um, although his hands are not yet clean, note number seven, as uh, he has not washed his hands. So it's before washing this uh, water, like Nitalas Yadan. We're going to speak about it in details. He may recite this expression of gratitude as it does not involve the utterance of the name of Hashem. So it says clearly, so we're going to, to learn. So if uh, your mouth is not clean, right? So you cannot say the name of Hashem. And uh, well, when they say not clean, even uh, you, when you pronounce the name of Hashem, you don't even have to, uh, you're not allowed to even have saliva. Your own saliva. Like if you, let's say, even you brush your teeth and you floss and you did whatever you need to do. And if there is too much saliva, you have to spit it or you have to swallow saliva. Because this is also disrespect to the holy name of Hashem. Commentary number eight. Generally, prayers must not be said with the unclean hands. So that's why before we pray, we, we wash our hands. Right? However, since uh, Modani, uh, this prayer, the name of the prayer, does not contain, um, contain within it uh, mention of divine name, it may be recited even before one washes his hands. Mishnah Bruna. Okay, so no name, uh, name of uh, Hashem, so he can say it. It's uh, like exception. All uh, as we know, all of the other blessings have the name of Hashem. Okay, continue last sentence, and we should uh, pause slightly. Pause slightly between the words um, be, uh, "behem lach" and the words "raba." Commentary number nine. The adjective Rabba, great, is not description of the word uh, Bechamlach, uh, with mercy. Rather, it, it refers to the words uh, Emonasecha. Emonasecha. So it's like trust, right? That follows it. Expressing praise uh, for Hashem's faithfulness. As in a verse uh, from uh, which uh, it is stated in Eicha 3.22. The sense of the phrase is twofold. So that, that's the bottom line. Hashem can be trusted to reward those who serve Him. And He trusts us to serve Him faithfully. So He, he gives us this, uh, like, I don't know, what, what, what could be an example that uh, an employer gives you, I don't know, like expensive equip piece of equipment. Because He trusts you that you're going to do whatever you, need, you, 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 you are paid to do. So in some sense, that's uh, Hashem trusts us. Our, he gives us back our neshama, and He trusts that we're going to do the right thing. Is this okay? So we can stop here, and uh, we're going to figure out uh, um, when the next time we're going to learn. So please review whatever we learned today, and uh, the next time we start, we can start with uh, questions for whatever we will learn. So I count on you, and I'm, I'm in this class. I'm not going to do any reviews. So if you have you 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 your uh, your homework to review whatever we did, if you have any questions? I would love to answer them, uh, and we we continue from there. Okay. Okay. If no you problem. have uh, any questions whatsoever, you can ask me now, uh, or well, later uh, on tomorrow. No, no, no. I'll be honest with you. Like, like um. This part stuff, like I was learning a lot of this stuff in the yeshiva, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, yeah, I don't really have any questions at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, just because, like I said, I've been studying since like August, and then the yeshiva really like boosted me, because I was there studying mm -hmm. from 5 a.m. to like 